Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, <laughs> go to work. When you first made your first item, what was it like? Oh, it was, it was cool. Actually, I was making some merch for one of the CDs, mm-hmm. and that's how I started off. And then we, you know, just kept making T-shirts, kept making designs. And they, oh, it's somebody that told me that they said they've been with you ever since you were selling t-shirts uh, in a, on a particular street and, and out of your van, out of the back of your van. And you didn't have tables and, and different things. And he said before he had all the setup, <laughs> he said, I've been with him since then. <laughs> yeah, we used to just load the van down. He used to look like it was dragging. <laughs> oh my gosh well come on now even just a stack of those 3XLs or 4XLs that's lifting weights that's amazing that's oh, just close. look I could tell a story mm-hmm. we was <clears throat> we was expanding and we was selling our shirts to other stores before we got a store mm. and uh, a store in the mall in Las Vegas had called me mm-hmm. and they wanted to buy some, some t-shirts so I drove out there <clears throat> and when I was driving out there I caught a blowout mm-hmm. so I had the van loaded up so much I couldn't even get to the jack oh. to, to jack the car up Ooh. so I had to walk maybe like five miles and it was like 110 degrees oh, wow. back to back to whiskey peats <laughs> and uh, when I got there I was I was like feeling like I was going to have a heat stroke so mm. I drank like two Gatorades and went and sat on the toilet so I could gather myself <laughs> so when I walked back out I seen a dude pull up he had a car like mine and I knew he had the jack like I had mm-hmm. so I asked him you know hey you know I need a favor could you take me back to my van and help me change my tire mm. So he was like, no, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. So I waited around a little longer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another guy pulled up. He had a little Chevy car. Mm -hmm. So I was like, he got the same jack too. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, man, I was wondering, could you take me up the road a little bit so I could change my tire, Mm -hmm. put my spare on? Mm -hmm. So he was like, yeah, man, come on, I got you. Mm -hmm. So we got back in the car and we drove back. When we drove back to the van, Mm -hmm. I kept saying it was over the next hill. Oh. Then it was like, oh no, it's over the next hill. Oh, wow. So I was like, wow. When I looked at how far I walked, I was like, man, oh, my this is a miracle. God. I didn't have a heat stroke out there. Right, at 110 degrees. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I took his jack out. I jacked the car up. I lowered the spare tire from the back of the van, mm-hmm. put it on. Then I looked at all them clothes and I was like, wow, never will I do it again. After that, when I kind of cleared out some of the merch, mm-hmm. I took the jack out from where it was <laughs> and moved it to a place where I could get to it. <laughs> I bet you I was did. like, this ain't going to never happen again because I was splitting hairs on what I'm going to do. Because okay. I said, I could unload the van, yeah. but it's so hot I'm going to get tired. Yeah. Or I could start walking to the back to the gas station and see if I could catch somebody that got a jack. Right. But you didn't even realize how far you had driven. Yeah. Man, how far I had passed that rest area. Yeah. <laughs> or the last service area. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Then what's crazy, it was right by our prison, too. No. So I'm like... I can't throw my hands up and ask for no ride because people don't think <laughs> probably just got out of prison. <laughs> so I just went ahead and walked all the way. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know exactly where about you talking. Lord Jesus. That's doing the most. So that was way back in the day, huh? Yeah. And then it was crazy when I got to the store to do he was a dude from New York. He didn't even really have no money to buy the stuff. He wanted me to leave it on consignment. And I'm like, I just went through all this for 
two hundred and some dollars and leaving like a thousand dollars worth of stuff on the consignment yeah. for him to clean the store out and leave on me. Oh no. He had sent me some money one time and then uh after that he quit answering his phone call and I drove back out there and the store was empty, it was gone. Oh wow. That's wow, he fell up. Mm-hmm. Dang, that's too much. And so now, that's why, like you said, you you keep your own merchandise. And I tell you, you have a you have your own warehouse, and you just keep it moving. Cause I tell you, yeah, that kind of lets. I knew that yeah. selling at other people's store. I knew that wasn't gonna be the way. No. After I took that loss, I was like, you know, it's time for us to get our own stuff, pay our own bills. Mm-hmm. Amen, amen. Wow. Wow. Woo wee. That's something else right there. That that's one of them stories that when people hear this podcast, they gonna be like, Wow. Man. And he, oh look, between them and downtown Compton AQ, mm-hmm. that's what made me get my own store because AQ they kept driving me down on my price that I sell the shirts to them for. Mm. Once it started taking off. They call me and then uh, I drop off shirts mm-hmm. and then they pay me when they sell. Mm-hmm. But they draw the price down so 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 far. I was like, wow, I can't let people control my inventory like this. Right, I got you. I see. I see. It was exactly. like the stock market. I, I was getting cheaper and cheaper. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't it wasn't like the stuff we wasn't selling. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see, see, like when it really starts selling, they start trying to slow me down. Uh-huh. I see. Oh, wow. That's something to think about. Really? You know, like, I'm hoping other people, when they listen to the podcast as well, that they will, you know, glean from your business experiences as well in order to help them, you know, from learning from the things that you've been through. And so, again, I want to commend you for sticking in there and, and being that, that beacon of light, like they say, too. Because now I'm hearing that, you know, over 10 years in business, this is really something monumental, you know, in the city of Compton and through the pandemic and everything, you know. Oh, yeah. Amen. It's a blessing. Yes, it is. Amen and amen. So... Keep up the great work, absolutely. Thank you once again. It's been, it's always fun, <laughs> absolutely. And I, I tell you, the time goes by super, super fast at the store. So, uh, you know, it's a really great thing. So for people that may not know, you can go online, micpt.com, and order anytime <laughs> online as well is coming to the Made in Compton store as shared in the description um, across East Willowbrook and uh, Londra in the city of Compton. So until next time, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. Peace.